Hey, welcome back. Before we get started from building our valve body vacuum tester, we're going to go over why it's important to vacuum test the valve body to begin with. Now, we all know our beloved 4L60E has a lot of inherent problems, mainly the 3 through 4 clutch pack. And if you know anything about these transmissions, and it applies to the 65E and the 70E too, they just love to eat the 3-4 clutch pack. And there's a pretty simple reason why, is that there's a lot of things that actually affect that clutch pack. And if you ever rebuilt one of these transmissions and had that clutch pack fail, or pulled a junkyard and had it failed pretty fast, this is probably the reason why. Because none of this got tested or checked before it got slammed together. And you can do all the hard parts in the case that you want, but... If your valve body ain't functioning right, you're just going to keep doing that. So, let's look at our diagram here. And this is a Sonax chart. You can download this for free. I'll include a link. And I'd suggest you do what I did and laminate this. But, let's just go through. We can see right here in our TCC regulator valve, one of the symptoms that can be of this failing is the 3 through 4 clutch back being burnt. So there's already one component there that can cause that to be burnt without any of the hard parts being bad. We look at our M plugs here, loss of D3 oil, no fourth, loss of fourth signal oil, or it drops out of fourth. And that's just any one of these three or all three or combination of these M plugs being bad. We look at our 4-3 sequence valve and our 3-4 relay valve, no fourth and low fourth gear pressure. Once again, that can attribute to the 3-4 being an issue. Our 3-4 shift valve can also cause 3-4 concerns and third clutch failure. The reverse abuse bore plug can also cause 3-4 clutch being burnt. And you can see here, no 3-4 clutch issues, none, none. But our forward abuse bore plug, the 3-4 clutch can be a symptom of this being bad too and can cause burning. And we look through the rest of this, there's really no issues outside of the actuator feed limit valve that can cause a no fourth condition. And remember, this is just the valve body that can cause the inherent 3-4 issues these transmissions have. We flip it over on the back side, and this is a diagram of our pump, and we'll show vacuum testing locations too. Right here, our pressure regulator valve can cause a 3-4 clutch failure in its in and of itself, along with the boost valve. So there's two components in the pump that can also attribute to that. And hopefully this will kind of help understand why vacuum testing and making sure not only the pump, but the valve body here is actually good on all these components because these ain't good. Your three, four ain't gonna live a long life no matter what. And you can do whatever you want in the transmission case, but we got to address these to make sure all functions correctly and lives a long, happy life. So now let's go over what we actually need to build our vacuum tester. We're going to need two brass tees, pipe nipples. We're going to need a couple hose barbs. We're going to need M plugs, a vacuum gauge, and needle valves. And they have to be needle valves. This is all quarter inch MPT, by the way. But the reason these have to be needle valves is we need these to calibrate our tester. We do not want to pull a full vacuum on the valve body. If we pull an actual vacuum on the valve body with no leakage, then that's a sign that things are too tight fitting and we need to address that. What we're actually measuring is leakage between components. And there's a certain amount of leakage for the valve body to function correctly. But if we actually pull full vacuum and find that things are fully sealed, then we need to do something either with polishing bores or addressing why things are too tight fitting. We're also going to need a number 65 drill bit. And these are small. I want to show you a little trick then to be able to chuck these up in a normal drill that we can do that. And this is going to be important. They have to be a number 65. This will contribute to being able to set calibration when we actually go to test. So, through the power of video editing, we will have a fully done tester. 
Man, I wish that happened that fast in real life. But here we are. You can see we got Barb. That's going to go to our vacuum pump. Sorry, guys. No hand vacuum pump this time. We need an actual vacuum pump. We got our needle valve. One of our T's with the vacuum gauge on top. Pipe nipple. The other T, which you can see here. I just kind of have it face this way for convenience. The other needle valve. And then we got this open port, which this is going to go to the hose barb after we get it calibrated. And this will go to our test plate we're going to make here in a second. And then we got the M plug here, which the M plug is where we need to drill that number 65 hole. And that will be for calibration purposes only. After we get this calibrated, we'll take this off and put the hose barb back in. But you can see this one does not have a hole drilled in it yet. And... What we're going to do, we're going to drill that number 65 hole, just roughly center. Don't have to be perfect, as long as the hole is good. You don't want to wobble that hole out or anything else. Now, I'm going to show you the trick, which I already got this chucked up, so you can see. And this is nice and tight. And the way I did this, and I did this before, because I was trying to get this on camera for you guys, but whew, it's kind of hard to work in front of the camera where you can see. I couldn't actually see it and doing all this. But, if you're anything like me, you have a myriad of these plastic strolls from your cleaners. You're going to take this and you're going to cut it down to size. And this is where I'm going to show you the magic. You can see that just pulled out. And hopefully, you can kind of see in there, I got one of those strolls in the chuck. So let me loosen this up. And you can't just use the straw straight as it is. Which, if you'd come out. Hold up, guys, we're having technical difficulties. There we go. Woo, that was hard. But you can see, and this one's a little mangled from it, what you're gonna do is cut it down to size where it fits in your chuck. And then you can see this straw was still Kind of one piece there. I actually just came down a little bit and cut it right in half. Hopefully, kind of get the idea from that. You're just roughly cutting that straw somewhere in half. And you're just going to chuck that up with a bit in there. You want the tip of your chuck jaws to grab up here where you sectioned it in half. This whole back here is just support to help keep it centered. And this is actually going to compress and grab that drill bit. That way, you can actually do something with a normal drill. So having to spend 10 bucks for an adapter for something you might only use once. Now, if you use micro drills a lot, you might have an adapter. That'd be the better way to go. If you're like me and you use these once in an absolute blue moon, this is probably like first time in five years I've used one of these. This is the way you can use them. Quick, down, dirty, just to drill a hole. And then, I already got this one drilled out. And you can see, I didn't really care about it being centered, but it's all the way through. And I don't have that hole wallowed out or anything else. And that's all you need for the calibration. So, let me get this cleaned up. We'll get everything set up here, and we'll show you how to calibrate this. All right. So here we are, you can see I got it hooked up to my vacuum pump, and I actually got vacuum pump sitting pretty far away, hopefully so when we do this, you guys ain't deafened by that thing. But we're going to give a quick walkthrough of how to calibrate this first before we even start it. So what we're going to do, our first needle valve, we want to slowly open this until we just read 5 on the vacuum gauge. We have to be reading five. After we get that set to where we're reading five, this is where that M plug with the calib well, the drilled hold for calibration comes into play. We're going to plug this hole, and what we want to do, we're gonna see where this jumps up to. We want it to read 25 with our finger covering that hole and plugging it. Now, if it doesn't read 25, we'll adjust our second needle valve here, and this is our bleed until it reads 25. Once we get it reading 25, we're gonna let off, and we're gonna make sure that our main one is still reading five. 
if our main valve here is not reading five with this hole unplugged, we're gonna readjust this until it's five and repeat the second step of plugging the hole and adjusting the bleed until we read 25. And once we read five with this uncovered and this adjusted, and we plug this and read 25, we are fully calibrated. We can remove our calibration plug and put our hose barb in and get onto the test plate part. So let's actually set the calibration here. So as you guys just seen, I got it on five, kind of messing around with it, plugging this hole, everything else. And it's actually a little under 25. So that means I got a small leak somewhere in one of these. I'm going to have to retighten everything until we get that addressed. So I will be back here in two seconds. All right, I'm back. You can see we're on five. And I'm just doing this now so you can see. I don't want to waste your time. But we plug the hole. We shoot up to... 25, I need to adjust that bleed just a little bit more. But you can see that's how you calibrate it. All I had to do is tighten everything up a little bit. Apparently I had just a very small leak that was affecting things. But you can see 25 plug, come down to five. And that's really it for calibration. Once it's calibrated, you can move on to actually testing. So, on that note, let's actually make our test plate. All right, so here we are back at the bench, and this is our test plate. And I'm just going to give you a quick walkthrough of how to make this. It's nothing special. You just want to take a piece of acrylic, which you can see I just used a piece of blue of acrylic. You want to cut it roughly two by five. It really don't have to be perfect. And you can see I got a hose barb in there. And this one's actually an eighth inch MPT on there. And all I did was one inch in on both sides was I drilled a three eighth hole, put a little Teflon tape around there and just let this thread itself naturally in that hole. Once again, nothing super important on this. You can be off. You can see my cut wasn't all that straight with the hacksaw. But that's okay. This isn't really important. And then, you're just going to need yourself some type of gasket material. Which, this is just a silicone cook mat. Ideally, you'd want this clear so you could see through it. But, I had a big pack of old gray ones I use for stupid gasket stuff like this. And I just cut this and just punched a hole in it. So that way, we'll line that up. And we got a gasket with our test plate. And you want to make sure that you drill this hole offset like this. Just somewhere about in here. Like I said, this is one inch and one inch in. And the reason for that, the circuits, when you're testing, you're going to need that little bit of offset. That way, you can get this plate lined up and all good over there for testing. And you just let this thread in. And that's all there is to the DIY tester. Now, in the next video... We're going to actually go through testing a valve body, which will be the one for my 4L60. And we'll deem whether it's good or not, or just a couple simple repairs will bring it back up to snuff. So if you want to see that, stick around and you get the whole walkthrough of how to test a valve body, see whether it's good or not, and see what actually needs fixed. Until then, I will catch you.